guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. We are back with another what's new at the drugstore video where I talk through all of the new drugstore skincare and makeup products and let you know my thoughts on all of them, including, why am I already out of breath? Including application footage of every single product and or close-ups of the product texture so that you can really get a true feel for every single product I talk about and figure out whether or not it's worth the purchase for you. No hair care in this video because I have a separate drugstore hair care favorites and fail series that I will list in the description box below. I just posted my last one like maybe a month or so ago. So if you missed that, that's available to you. No drugstore hair care in today's video because we have enough to talk about as is. Let's jump into it. Starting off with skincare, we have a new cleanser from Verst called the Purist Antioxidant Cleanser. This contains a variety of hydrating ingredients like aloe, panthenol, hyaluronic acid, and several different plant extracts like blueberry, raspberry, cucumber, and apple. It has a very lightweight hydrating gel consistency that feels very soft and smooth on the skin. I really enjoy rubbing this in and I also enjoy removing it because it easily swipes away. I feel like I've been trying some cleansers lately that are not super easy to swipe away. I kind of have to like pull at them to remove them. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And that really bothers me. I want the whole cleansing process to feel as easy and seamless as possible, and I definitely get that with this cleanser. Plus, despite this having more of that lightweight consistency without any creamier conditioning ingredients, it is something that effectively cleanses without stripping my skin or leaving it feeling dry. So all around, a great drugstore cleanser. Next up is the La Roche-Posay Lipicar AP Gentle Cleansing Oil. Aside from La Roche-Posay's thermal spring water, this also contains shea butter, obviously a very small amount, this is not shea buttery, and niacinamide. This is the exact same kind of concept as the newer CeraVe cleansing oil that launched a few months ago. It's called a cleansing oil, but it doesn't feel like an oil whatsoever. Instead, just like the CeraVe cleansing oil, it actually feels like a gel, but in comparison to CeraVe, it's just just a little bit thinner. This also starts to bubble up slash foam slightly as I rub it into my skin and it does immediately melt down my face makeup, but it doesn't do a good job at removing eye makeup. But even if it did do a good job of that, I wouldn't want to use it for that purpose because it does burn my eyes and it also tastes very soapy in my mouth, which is not something that I ever usually experience with cleansers. But after I tried this a few times before I really looked into the ingredients, I specifically wrote down a note saying, I don't know what it is about this, but I swear to God, I always end up with mouth that tastes like soap after I use it. And upon looking into the ingredients, I quickly realized it's because the primary cleansing ingredient is sodium laureth sulfate. And you guys know me, I don't demonize ingredients, including sulfate. So it's not something that I was afraid of, but it just, it made sense as to why this gets bubbly and tastes a little bit soapy. This does do an amazing job at cleansing my skin. Aside from not being great at removing eye makeup, my skin feels very clean after I use it, but but if I use this too frequently, it definitely does irritate my skin a little bit and it'll start to feel a bit tight and dry. So it's not something that I reach for on a daily basis. I was doing that for a while and I was like, why is my skin feeling so tight and dry around my mouth? realized it was from this. So it's more so just something that I'll reach for if I feel like my skin's just extra dirty that day. You know what I mean? We all have those days. Cetaphil recently came out with a new line containing purified peptides. It is called their Healthy Renew line. And if I could find all of these products, that would be great. No, seriously, where's the last one? Here it is. So I'll talk about all three of these products together, given that they have the same exact ingredient highlights. Aside from purified peptides, this range contains panthenol, niacinamide, and two different plant extracts called rice lease and edelweiss. I was really excited to see this launch at the drugstore because I feel like we don't have a ton of product options containing peptides right now. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I'm trying to rack my brain and I feel like there's not that many at the drugstore. And peptides are incredible replenishing ingredients that have a variety of benefits for the skin. So again, I was excited about it. So this product right here with the little orange beads in it is the Healthy Renew Face Serum. It is a very, very lightweight true gel. And when I say true gel, I mean that it literally is just a gel. It doesn't have that viscosity to it that other serums may have. So for example, 
compared to the ordinary copper peptide serum, which I know a lot of you are familiar with because I talk about it all the time, that has more of that like slip to it, that true serum-y feeling. Whereas this, again, is just like a true gel. I don't know what else to say besides true gel, but that feels like the wrong word. It just basically dries down to feel completely weightless. So I think something like this is actually a nice option for those of you that are looking to layer multiple products in your skincare routine. Because if you're trying to layer a lot of products that all have that like sippy, really serum-y texture, then you can run into issues with pilling a lot more quickly than with something like this. The eye gel serum also contains shea butter and coconut oil, so some additioning, softening, nourishing ingredients, and this has more of that gel serum feel where it's not as weightless as the face serum, but it still is incredibly lightweight. I love the texture of this one. You guys know I love how gel serums feel under the eyes during the daytime. I think that they just make for great under eye creams that don't mess up makeup. So I'm always down for something like this at the drugstore. But my favorite of the three is definitely the night cream. This doesn't have coconut oil, so if you're super acne prone, you don't have to worry about that. It does have shea butter though. And oh my God, the texture of this. This is what I would consider to be a mid-weight cream. It's not a super thick cream, but it's also not a super lightweight one. It's just kind of right in between and it is perfect. It's plush, it's silky, it feels very moisturizing and honestly, it feels like luxury. This feels like a high-end moisturizer, which I feel like Cetaphil continues to do. They just know how to formulate an amazing moisturizing cream, and this is no exception. It's it's delicious, I gotta say. So if you are number one in need of a new moisturizing cream from the drugstore, definitely look into this. I feel like you would really enjoy it as we enter these colder weather months. But number two, are interested in just one product from this new Healthy Renew range, let it be the night cream. Please. Next up is the Hero Cosmetics Bright Eyes Illuminating Eye Cream. This contains a lot of brightening and conditioning ingredients, things like niacinamide, caffeine, allantoin, vitamin E, cranberry oil. You guys know me, I'm not gonna try to pronounce this. Allegedly, that extract is a type of algae that is rich in an antioxidant called astaxanthin, which is also an ingredient that you'll find listed in here separately, and lecithin. This is a lightweight gel cream that is definitely a little bit plusher and thicker and creamier than the Cetaphil eye cream while still being something that I would consider to be lightweight for a cream. It has a really, really nice smooth slip to it as you apply it, and it does have this amazing metal tip applicator, which I just think makes for the most incredible application experience. The cooling sensation is everything. And this does subtly illuminate, but it's definitely not quite as much as other illuminating eye creams that I've tried that have more of like a pearlescence under the eyes that's super noticeable. I feel that this is more subtle than that, which I prefer because it doesn't look like you're wearing an illuminating eye cream. It just looks like your under eyes look a little bit brighter. This reminds me of the Inky List, oh, what was that called? Their illuminating under eye cream that they, I think still carry, but they got rid of the metal tip applicator. So I haven't used that in a couple of years at this point. But from what I remember, that one was lighter weight and did have more of that pearlescence under the eyes. So this is like a creamier, less pearly version of that, I think. I'm just going off memory, which honestly shouldn't really be trusted because my memory is not the best. Next up is the La Roche-Posay Tolerain Rosal... Rosaleic, Rosaleic, AR Visible Redness Reducing Moisturizer. So this is one of those redness reducing moisturizers that contains green pigment to neutralize redness. So if you were to purchase this, don't be alarmed by the green color. It's not expired. It is supposed to look like that. And aside from La Roche-Posay's thermal spring water, this contains shea butter and a dipeptide. I am not obsessed with the texture of this. It's a bit of a thicker lotion that also has a slightly oily feel and that sort of texture is just not my personal favorite, especially to rub all over my face. If this were concentrated in an eye cream, then I would feel differently. But again, rubbing all over my face, especially during the daytime, I'm like, mm. And while I don't typically deal with redness, I actually had redness around my mouth when I was playing around with this. So I was like, oh, perfect. But I guess not perfect because while this did reduce redness a little bit for me, it was not to the extent that I was hoping for, especially given the fact that this has green pigment in it for that specific purpose. So this was kind of a fail for me, not one that I would personally recommend, but that doesn't mean that it's a terrible product and that doesn't mean that will be the experience for everybody. And another fail, 
spoiler alert, is the new L'Oreal Bright Reveal sunscreen with broad spectrum SPF 50. This contains adenosine, vitamin C, and vitamin E. And I was excited at first because as you can see, it has a very fluid consistency, but this feels oily when I apply it and like so oily that it almost feels greasy. And that is just definitely not something that I like, especially in a sunscreen because that's the last step in my skincare routine. And if I have this like full face of skincare on that feels amazing and then I'm going on top of that with something that feels greasy, well then I'm ticked. I didn't hate the finish of this. I would say it's very, very glowy, but it's not something that looks like dewy and wet on my skin, you know? Like there's a difference. So that I didn't have an issue with. It really is just how it feels when I apply it. And and it's not for me. Oh my gosh, I was so excited about this. It is the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm. So they, I don't know if they still have it actually, they did have a Cicaplast chapstick that I purchased previously, total fail, didn't do anything for my lips. So when I saw that they were coming out with a balm version, specifically a barrier repairing balm with 5% panthenol, lipides, Lipides. That's a new one. I haven't heard a brand call that out before. I just thought that I was gonna love this since I really enjoy the original Cicaplast Balm for your entire face, but I do not. This is very thick and stiff when I squeeze it out of the tube, but it almost immediately melts down into a texture that's quite a bit thinner, which is a huge bummer because it just does not condition my lips enough. It doesn't do enough for me. It doesn't last very long. It's just not as occlusive as I thought it was going to be upon first squeeze squeezing it out. And that's something that I definitely look for in a lip balm because I want it, of course, to make my lips feel amazing. Who doesn't? Another lip product that I was really excited to test out is the Tony Moly Timeless Ferment Snail Lip Sleeping Mask. Aside from snail secretion filtrate, this contains tons of ingredients that are going to condition, brighten, and calm. Things like cacao seed butter, centella asiatica, skullcap root, green tea, chamomile, the list goes on. And this feels really nice at first, but it also thins out and just does not last long enough on me at all. I'm bummed. So I would save your money on this. I think you're better off purchasing the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, Vaseline Lip Therapy. I'll ride for that product till I die. Not this one, Vaseline. All right, I finally picked up all three products from this FutureWise launch that I saw at Target several months ago. When I first saw this sitting on the shelf, I was like, ooh, that's cute. And I went up and looked at it and I was like, all right, I don't need that, come on. And then as time went on, I was like, but maybe my subscribers want to know what I think. I'm buying it. And I did actually test out both of these products in a first impressions video that I'll list below. I tested out a full face of drugstore skincare and makeup and included these. I now have my updated thoughts and I thought I would also include the last product, which is the cream. There's a hair. Oh my God, is it locked in here? Ooh. No, I just got chills. That is disturbing when there's a hair in the cream and then the hair has cream on it, it, I feel ill. Just makes me feel like the whole product is contaminated, which is fine because I didn't like it. All right, let's start off with the hydrating mist first. This contains squalane, hyaluronic acid, sorbitol, and polyglutamic acid. And this has a very, very nice, incredibly fine, lightweight, evenly, I feel like I'm petting you guys. Evenly dispensing mist, as you can hopefully see. It feels super nice. I do really enjoy applying it, but I feel like I still prefer my Bioma Balancing Face Mist over this one. So when it comes to a drugstore facial mist, that would still be my recommendation. But if you are curious about this or if you're into products that have that ultra lightweight fine mist, then you may really enjoy it. The one thing that I will say about this entire line that really threw me off is the fact that it does not contain snail anything. I thought that it for sure would since it, they're all called Slug Boost. Oh no, they're not, but they all have slug in the title. Slug Boost, Slug Cream, Slug Balm. No slug, snail, anything in these products though. So that may be a pro for you or it may be a con. I was just confused by the choice of words given that that 
is not an ingredient in these. The cream contains phytosterols, palmid oil tripeptide 10, evening primrose oil, and linoleic polyglycerides. I personally love the texture of this for the daytime. It's not something that I would really consider to be a cream though. I would say it's more of a mid-weight lotion. It feels super hydrating, super moisturizing, but it's lightweight enough to wear under makeup. So again, one that I love for daytime and think is definitely the star of this entire collection. Because this is definitely not the star in my opinion. It is the Slug Balm and it's the product I was the most excited to try out. I just, I really enjoy trying out these thicker, more balmy creams for nighttime during the winter and it's actually almost winter. Oh my God. I'm bracing myself for the frigid Minnesota cold that is approaching. And thought that maybe this would be something I would enjoy using during that, but first of all, this contains bisabolol rapeseed sterols, I had to pause before attempting to pronounce this because it's a mouthful. Cetyl hydroxyproline palmitamide, which is an ingredient that's supposed to be similar to a ceramide. So all of those things are great, but one of the first ingredients is actually vegetable oil and that definitely translates into the feel of this. When you're just looking at it, it looks like it's gonna be really, really nice and conditioning, but this feels greasy. I just don't like it. I used it multiple times because I was like, I. I don't know why I wanted to love this so bad. Something about this made me want to like it, but I just did not. Can't recommend it. So if you're looking for a barrier cream for these colder weather months, I'm gonna list a video below where I share my top 10 favorite barrier creams. Such good options in that video all different consistencies and textures, all different ingredient highlights, whatever you're looking for, you'll find it in that video. All right, let's jump over to body care and finish that up as part of skincare before we move on to makeup. You guys know my sick obsession for Tree Hut body care products. They are so, so good and so affordable. I absolutely love it. Let's do body washes first. This one is my absolute favorite and of course it's limited edition. It is the Cinnamon Dolce Foaming Gel Wash. I used to not really be into cinnamon, but something has happened to me within the last couple months where I have become obsessed. Obsessed. Like I want cinnamon everything. I want it in my lip products. I want it in my coffee. I want my candles to smell like cinnamon. I want it in my body care products. Oh my God. This is just like perfectly sweet, not sickly like Cinnabon, but perfectly sweet, perfectly cinnamony. Like this smells like kind of like a gingerbread cookie, but better. I would pass away if they came out with this in a body butter because I love their body butters, but they only have it in a shower gel, which I am very upset about. The other one that I haven't used yet, but just picked up as we start to get closer to Christmas is the Sparkling Sugar Gel Wash. I mean, it's good. It's nice. Don't get me wrong. Kind of like sweet berry or something like that. Nothing that remarkable or special about it in the way that I feel a lot of their products are remarkable and special, like this one right here. So if you're torn between the two, go for this. I actually need to buy more before it runs out. And the other product I would stock up on because it's also limited edition is one of their body butters in the scent Sweet Cream. I know a lot of you share my love for cake vanilla-like fragrances. And if you're one of those people, this is gonna be the body butter for you. It smells exactly that. It smells exactly that. What? It smells exactly like that. It's a mix between like cake, frosting, vanilla. Oh, that's good. I definitely I just got it on my nose. Okay, this one, I was walking through Walmart trying to see if they had anything that I couldn't find at a Target or you know other stores that I typically frequent. And really the only thing that stood out to me is Heritage by Mindy because it's exclusive to Walmart. They have these body care products that I didn't know about. So I picked up the body wash and whipped body cream, both in the fragrance Peony and Cypress. When I was in Walmart, Listen, I was incredibly caffeinated. Sometimes if I go into a store like that with the intent of going up and down the beauty aisles to look for products to review and I have a lot of caffeine in my system, I get overly excited. I think that things are a lot more exciting than they actually are once the caffeine wears off. And in that caffeinated state, I somehow convinced myself that this smells like Oribe. Mm. 
no. I mean, I can see where I was going with that at the time. There is something about this that is reminiscent of Oribe, but it's certainly not an Oribe dupe. It does still smell really good though. I do really like the smell. So I enjoy it in the body wash, but unfortunately not in this body cream. This is one of those body creams that for me just does not absorb into my skin, which is a bummer because it's like nice and tick and creamy. Tick like T-H-I-C-C. <laughs> Hey, myself. So this is something that I have to mix in with my Cetaphil moisturizing cream to get it to actually like absorb and settle down and not stay white and not rubbed in on my skin. So wouldn't recommend that one. Oh wait, I almost forgot about this. Okay, no, this isn't a new launch. I don't think it is at least, but I've had it for a while and I only just newly started using it. It is the Naturium Skin Renewing Retinol Body Lotion. Now that we are no longer in self-tan season, or at least I am no longer in self-tan season, obviously. I am going all in with exfoliants and retinol on my body. Aside from containing encapsulated retinol, this also has a lantoin, shea butter, and sodium PCA. And it's a nice, I would say, thicker lotion. It is something that I think is pretty universal in the sense that it's not like a thick, heavy body butter, but it's also not a super lightweight lotion that really is only best for summer. It's a good lotion. My only complaint is that it's fragrance-free. I just, I don't love using only fragrance-free body products or body lotions. I want my body lotions to have a nice smell when I'm applying them. So I have been mixing this with my fragranced body lotions. Like for example, I'll add some of this and I don't love that because then I feel like I'm diluting it and not getting as much of that retinol action as I could. So I would love if they came out with fragranced, not only this, but also body care in general because all of their body products I believe are fragrance free and I want fragrance in my body products. I do. What can I say? All right, let's move on to makeup. Not as many makeup launches as skincare, but still some interesting things nonetheless. First up is this new Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer Contour Palette. And I gotta say, this just does not make a whole lot of sense to me in terms of the color story. It has this very yellow banana powder, a pretty light contour shade, and then a pretty dark bronzing shade. So I can use this shade when my skin is fair, like in terms of the depth, it's something that works with me, but it's just a little bit too gray for my personal preference. So I don't love it anyway, but if I were to be using something from this to match my fair skin, this is the only thing I could use. This is too dark. This is far too dark. This is even too dark for me when I have self tan on. So I don't know, for me, these three colors just don't work, especially together, which is a bummer because Physicians Formula does make some really nice powders if you like a powder like the ones that they make. And I say that because they're definitely very dense, very creamy, almost buttery in quality, which is why they have butter in the title. So if you like a powder like that, they're super enjoyable to apply, but I just can't get this to work for me. So I have to give it away. Okay. I got a PR package with L'Oreal's Infallible Blushes, and I am pretty sure I mentioned this in a previous video, but I did not purchase these myself for the longest time because I didn't think the shades would be flattering on me. However, once I got them in PR, I was like, okay, well, I might as well review them. I gotta say I was right. These shades are just not good for me. And I do feel like a lot of people would also have that issue because they're just very... Oops. They're very like bright and intense in tone and color and pigment. Hold on, I'll show you what I mean. So this one is Fearless Coral. This one is Confident Pink. They're both very warm in undertone and I just don't like shades like this on my skin. And then the two deeper shades are Legendary Berry and Daring Rosewood. These are definitely more up my alley, but they're just too dark for me to wear as blush. And they're not really the type of product that I could just wear a little bit of because these are intensely pigmented. I'm good with intense pigment if the formula is easy to work with and easy to blend, but these apply so patchy, like every single shade. I took the tiniest, tiniest dab, tiniest dab of product and put that on and it immediately like pff, patches and then is so hard to blend out. And I know people are going to try to say that I apply too much, but I swear to God, like I literally ding, tapped it and it just patched immediately. They do eventually fully blend out. I will give them that, but it just takes a lot of effort. And when I think about the blushes that I have and I love, they take 
pretty much no effort. So if I felt like the shades were super beautiful, I would maybe put up with it. But even still, I'm like, I have beautiful shades from brands that have incredible easy to use formulas. So like, why would I waste my time with these? The brown shade especially was so difficult for me to blend, so patchy. This feels a little bit different in texture. It's so powdery that it's almost creamy, but mixed with the level of pigment and difficulty in blending, this was like a mess. Fallout was everywhere. So I would recommend avoiding these. But that's just my recommendation. You don't have to listen to it. That's the beauty of YouTube. L'Oreal came out. I'm pausing because I actually don't know if this was a recent launch. I recently got them in PR with other new products that I'll talk about next. So I'm assuming they're newer. It's their infallible grip 36 hour gel mechanical liners. I got to sneeze. Excuse me. They sent me the shades Bright Nude and Polar White. And I thought I would show you guys these because I feel like these are perfect for the waterline depending on what you're looking for. I personally don't love white in my waterline. I think it just looks too intense, too off. I prefer a nude like this. I think that this is perfect for the waterline. But regardless of what kind of color you like, I think that this is a really nice formula. It's easy to work with. You can build it up. And I like that it's soft and not like a dry pencil. And I also like the fact that they have little smudgers on the ends. I haven't used them yet, but I think a little smudge is a nice touch. You know, in case you overdo it, apply too much. Anyway, and I was also sent these liquid lipsticks in the same package as those eyeliners. So that's what I was referring to earlier. These are the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Resistance Liquid Lipsticks. I have been so confused by the fact that every single brand seems to be launching some sort of highly pigmented matte liquid lipstick over the past year, especially when that seems to be opposite of the trends that we've been seeing on social media. Like all the trending lip looks have been very, very natural, barely there, like a lip liner and a clear gloss or just a super sheer, barely there lip oil. Something along those lines, which again is opposite of something like this, which is highly pigmented and matte. I just find it interesting when every brand seems to be doing the same thing, but that thing is opposite of the current trends. Anyway, if you are somebody that is into a liquid lipstick like this, I think that you'll love these. I think these are amazing. And if these were around back when I wore liquid lips, like in my liquid lip era in college, I would have had every single shade. You better believe. These are super soft. They almost have like a balmy quality to them. So they're very comfortable. They're not drying. Again, they're highly pigmented. They actually do have a lot of other shades online and several that are more wearable than I would expect to see. I don't know. I feel like a lot of the times when affordable brands come out with lip products like this, they're just all in crazy colors, but there are some nice wearable shades here. So not for me, but if this kind of thing is for you, definitely something to check out because they're only $10.99. But the last few lip products that I have to review for this video are right up my alley. They're sheer, they're glossy, they're extra cushy and comfortable. You guys know that is my favorite. So let's start off with the Milani Fruit Fetish Lip Oil. This is not a new product, but they did launch a few more shades. So I picked up the shade Lychee Nectar, which I have to say ended up looking quite a bit different in person than I was expecting it to based on the photos online. This is described as a mauve pink and that is exactly how it looks in the images online. It looks like my exact favorite kind of shade. So pretty. But in person, I feel like this ends up looking more like a rosy, I don't even know, just like a rosy shade. Definitely darker than it looks online too. So it's still pretty, it's just not what I was expecting. And this is a lip oil that has a gel-like quality to it that I really, really love. But if I only apply one layer of this, it definitely feels too thin for me. So in order to get it to have that really cushy feel that I love, I do have to layer it up quite a bit. And then in doing that, the shade just ends up being too dark for my personal preference. But if you want a gel-like lip oil that is thin and is also something that has more of a natural sheen versus like a super, super drippy, glossy finish, then you may really enjoy this. The other thing I don't love about this is the smell slash taste. It's just like artificial candy. I don't like it. Elf finally launched lip oils 
Finally, I feel like they're so quick to launch other products. I'm surprised it took them so long to come out with these. They are called the Glow Reviver Lip Oils. They came out with seven shades that are incredibly sheer. So if you're looking for a lip oil that has a decent amount of pigment, these will not be for you. I picked up the shades Honey Talks and Red Delicious. Honey Talks is described as a brown beige and Red Delicious is described as a true red. These are definitely thicker than the Milani lip oils upon initial application. So with just one layer, they also have that nice gel quality, but they definitely feel a bit thicker and cushier. And they also are glossier in finish, so they look a little bit drippier, which is just definitely something that I love, but I know that that extra glossy look is not for everybody. The thing that I don't love about these is, well, there's a few things. Number one, they definitely do smell and taste like mint, and I mean, pretty potent mint at that, which is also paired with a tingly feel on the lips. And for me personally, a bit of of a dry sensation after wearing them. They don't last longer than an hour on my lips, and once they have faded, my lips feel a little bit drier than when I put them on, which does sometimes happen with lip oils. There are plenty of lip oils do not feel extra nourishing or conditioning on my lips as time goes on. And that's not something that I have a huge issue with, especially if I'm wearing a different lip product underneath it. I feel like that helps. But I know that a lot of people just wanna buy an all-in-one lip product that is not only going to add a little bit of pigment and gloss, but also be conditioning and long lasting. So if that is what you're looking for, these are not gonna be for you. So I gotta say, I was not as impressed with these as I was expecting to be. I feel like e.l.f. has just been nailing it with their launches across the board over the past couple years and this is one of the first products that they launched that I was like dang not the best. And last but not least, I of course had to show you guys swatches of all of the new shades in the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balm. All four of these shades make up what they call the cafe collection because they're all brown tone shades. First is Latte, which they describe as a dusty muted rose. I don't personally get that from Latte. This on me pulls more peachy. Next up is Chai, which is described as a sheer neutral light brown. This is definitely my favorite in terms of undertone, but I feel like it's just a bit too dark for my fair skin. This one right here is called Spice and it's described as a sheer warm gingerbread. Definitely not a shade that works for me personally because it ends up looking a little bit orange, but it's super beautiful. It's like a caramely brown. And the last shade is the deepest. It's called Mocha and described as a sheer dark chocolate brown. Definitely too dark for me. So overall, I would say that this collection is just not one that works for my skin tone personally, but that's totally fine because there are a million other skin tones out there. So if you really love brown toned lip products, 100% check these out because I am obsessed with the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balms. They're so, so, so cushy and comfortable. I said that so aggressively. They're insanely glossy. They're just beautiful lip products. I love them. One of my all-time favorites, I included them in a recent video where I shared all of my favorite lip products in every lip category. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will list that below. And I swatch every other shade that they have available, of course, aside from these four because they just came out, but all the other shades I swatch in that video. So if you are trying to pick up a different shade, maybe this collection isn't for you, check that video out below. All right, you guys, we're gonna wrap up this video here. Those are all of the products that I've been testing out that are new from the drugstore that I wanted to share my thoughts on. As always, I really hope you found this helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you're gonna test any of these products out, if I have convinced you to stay away from anything, if there are other products from the drugstore that you like me to review. Let's all chat in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. It really helps to support my channel. So I appreciate you so much. Make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, we got to get Elsie in here to say goodbye. Hello, baby. Will you come here and give mom a big hug? Will you? Or are you taking a nap? It's very gloomy out, isn't it? It makes you so tired. I know it. All right, you guys, I hope you have a great few days.